Today, we will cover the show Ben 10 Alien Force from beginning to end. Ben 10 Alien Force is the captivating sequel to the beloved animated series Ben 10 Classic. This time around, we witness the characters in a more mature light. Ben Tennyson, now 15, along with his 16-year-old cousin Gwen and former sidekick Kevin Levin, embark on a thrilling adventure. The story takes place five years after the original series, featuring a serialized narrative with an alien conspiracy and the search for Ben's missing grandfather. Father. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Ben is leading an everyday college life away from fighting aliens and has left his days as Ben 10 behind. One day after college, he walks into the van looking for his grandpa Max, where he finds a hologram with a message. The message says that Max is in a situation and has the Omnitrix, but oddly enough, Ben still has the watch concealed at his place. He shows the message to his cousin Gwen, who by the way is practicing martial arts now, and they encounter Magister Labrid, who claims that Max went missing during a mission and Ben puts his watch back on to rescue his grandpa. The trio crashes into an illegal trade of bioweapons where we see Kevin handling the business. Ben notices that his watch now has a completely new set of aliens and turns into swamp fire for the first time. After getting restrained, Kevin initially refuses to give out any info about the bioweapons, but has a change of heart after Gwen asks him to help. Kevin leads them to the Forever Knights hideout where they face off against a dragon and some knights. They manage to defeat them, but Magister Labrid gets heavily injured, and before passing away, he asks Ben to locate the source of these weapons. After he dies, Kevin officially joins their team, and Gwen uses her powers to trace the weapons to their source. They locate a mine shaft, and Kevin knocks down the guard on duty, who happens to be a DN alien wearing a photonic display mask. Inside, they discover a huge tower, and Ben uses the mask to disguise himself, in order to sneak inside the tower. They destroy the weapon room but are now surrounded by DN aliens, so Ben turns into Humongosaur and throws them around like kickball. Afterward, they encounter the hybrid commander, who is much stronger than your ordinary DN aliens. The hybrid threatens to destroy a 5 mile radius to erase all witnesses, but Ben manages to stop him and crash his airship. Somewhere else, the hybrid Supreme is informed about the destruction of their flyship and their encounter with Ben 10. Sometime later, Kevin fixes Max's van and runs off with it to sell it for money. Kevin visits his old nemesis Volcanus, seeking a hologram which he intended to buy after selling the van, but he gets trapped until Ben and Gwen arrive to the rescue. There, they learn that Kevin never intended to betray them and only wanted to help them find Max. The hologram contains yet another message from Max, telling Ben to form a team of people with superpowers, and hence, the recruiting of heroes begins. Sometime later, Kevin's plumber's badge, which he took from the Magister Labrid pinpoints the location of a nearby badge. The trio heads to the location, where they find a guy named Alan transformed into Heat Blast from the classic show. Ben fights Alan, and after both of them escape from the police, who have been after Alan for a while, he reveals that he's part alien and part human. His father is also a plumber, which would explain the badge he was holding. Kevin tells Gwen how part humans always have some kind of superpower, hinting that Gwen herself is part human. Later, they come across a giant giant alien-made weather tower and learn that the DN aliens have built these all over the city to make it habitable. They take the tower down and free Alan of all charges, who decides to stay behind and help the local police in catching more aliens. Later, they come across a guy named Michael Morningstar, who also has a plumber's badge. Just exactly what Ben is looking for. Kevin is jealous because Gwen has grown a liking to Morningstar, but they quickly learn that he's not the hero he acts to be. He has been absorbing the life force of girls to become stronger and then controls them as his puppets. Gwen breaks free from his hypnosis and manages to put an end to his madness. Michael returns as Darkstar and tries to absorb the powers of Ben, Kevin, Hybrid, and a plumber. Now, his plan doesn't go very far as the squad defeats him again and he gets arrested by the same plumber. Kevin and Gwen also receive their official plumber badges and are left responsible for the safety of the planet. Ben asks his crush Julie out on a date, which is ruined by a a baby version of the alien upgrade from Ben 10 Classic. The little alien abducts Julie, but she manages to control it. Oh, and she also learns the truth about Ben, which she finds is very amusing. 
The little alien was only trying to lead them to Basil, who was trapped in an explosion chamber. Ben saves the day once again, and Basil leaves the little one behind, whom Julie names Ship and keeps as a pet. Ship is often used as a means of transportation by the gang throughout the series. Professor Paradox is a time traveler who was sucked into a time machine that he himself created 50 years ago from the current time, which grants him powers to walk through space and time. After meeting him in his lab, the gang fights an age-accelerating alien who turns Kevin into a grumpy old man. But the professor does turn him young again, so no worries. He then explains how a miscalculation from his end sent the alien to Ben's timeline and then shows them how the Earth would look if the alien was left unattended. He cannot simply go back in time and stop the accident from ever happening because, well, that would take away his powers. He even foreshadows the future of Ben with... Never mind. It should be here any... They travel back in time and learn that the alien is just one of the assistants who got sucked into the machine along with Paradox and turned into... Uh, whatever that thing was. Ben lets the accident happen, but saves the assistant, hence saving the Earth from that grim future. Some time later, Kevin tries an experiment on a teleporter, causing it to malfunction, leading the group to a tech nerd, Cooper. Unfortunately, Cooper was attacked by DN aliens and got abducted, so now the trio has to rescue him. His trail leads them to the same place they met Professor Paradox, which is now transformed into a concealed DN alien day camp. Long story short, Cooper is an extremely intelligent mechanic, has telekinesis powers, and is being forced to build alien tech by the DN aliens. The group breaks into the camp and rescues the kid, but is surrounded by a horde of DN aliens. After demolishing the concealment device, they escape the camp, but their business there is not over yet. Now we learn more about Max's whereabouts. One day, they drive to a town called Santa Mira to look for Gwen's brother Ken who went missing. They trace his steps to a hatchery, where we see Max for the very first time. He sneaks inside and arrives at Ken's torture chamber, but he's just a little too late as Ken has already been converted into the DN alien. Meanwhile, the trio enters the hatchery and Ben learns that he has to use the watch to revert Ken. They reunite with Max, who reveals the hybrid is making mass shipments to turn humans into alien army, and it is too late for the gang to stop them. Heroically, Max decides to suicide bomb the place in order to erase all the cargo and save humanity, which works for the time being. A few days pass since his death, and the trio visits Max's secret fishing spot in his memory. They spot a cloaked woman placing a rose under a tree, who vanishes when they chase her. They discover a Max plus Verdona engraving on the tree and Ben says this. Max plus Verdona? Who's Verdona? Verdona is an energy being with powers similar to those of Gwen. Somewhere along the line, she and Max grew apart due to their different responsibilities, but the news of his death spread so far in the universe that she came back to mourn the loss. She asks Gwen to come to her planet where she can break the limits of her powers, but after she refuses to go, Verdona goes berserk and tries to force her. However, she backs down and leaves when Gwen explains how much she enjoys her human life. One day, Gwen receives a hologram message from Helen asking for help, and Ben decides to go to Null Void to sort the matters out. Ben learns that the Null Guardians have gone berserk because of a villain named Devoid, who is manipulating them to dig a hole through a dimension. Devoid is Dr. Animo from the Ben 10 classic show, and Manny and Helen are working for a group they called the Helpers, who work as a resistance to Animo's dictatorship. They take Ben to meet their leader, the Wrench, who happens to be none other than Grandpa Max. Just when you thought this old man was dead! Max reveals that the grenade didn't kill him, but instead sent him here. Max gathers all the helpers and launches an attack at the dig site, and after they defeat the doctor, Gwen opens the portal to Earth and Ben steps into it. Max stays behind because he has to finish what he started in the Null Void, but at least they know he's not dead. A few days later, a man named Tyler is being chased by DN aliens when the gang rescues him and he mentions something about an oscillator key. He takes them to where it's located and after fighting some aliens, Ben figures that Tyler himself is one of the DN aliens who kept his memories even after turning. Turns out, all the DN aliens are ex-humans and Ben can save a number of lives if he can find a way to turn them back. The DN aliens arrive to reclaim the oscillator key, which they successfully do, and afterward, Ben uses his watch to turn Tyler back to his normal form, similar to what he did with Ken. What are you doing? 
I'll let you know as soon as I figure it out. But their mission isn't over, as they still have to stop the Hybrid's invasion. But at least they know how to fix the DN aliens. While fighting a Hybrid, Ben and he end up on the desert planet named Turawusta, which acts as a routing station for the teleporter they were fighting over. The two work together to fend off all the dangers in the area, until night falls, and they start getting along, if only a little. Hybrid introduces himself as Rain Rassig III, and as he keeps watch for the night, they get attacked by an alien which amputates mutates its arm. Ben uses Swamp Fire to reattach the arm, but he isn't so delighted about it. You see, his species believes that Hybrid is the one true species, and all others are abominations. Hence, their ultimate goal is to erase all of them from the universe. Even when they find the teleporter back, Ryan Rasig stays behind because now he feels impure and wants to live in isolation. Well, I mean, at least Ben knows what awaits them in the future, eh? At Galvin, the Hybrid invasion has already started, so Azmuth escapes with Paradox just in time to warn Ben. They mention a hyperspace jump gate which the Hybrids will be using to teleport their army to the Earth. In this need of the hour, Ben sends Kevin and Gwen to recruit all the part humans they aided in the past just as Grandpa ordered. Omnitrix contains the DNA of millions of species from all across the universe, and it can even be used to restore a species if they're wiped out by the Hybrids. Given the risk, Azmuth wants Ben to stay out of the final battle, but but Ben refuses, so to increase the chance of his survival, Azmuth unlocks access to every alien and the voice command for Ben. Gwen and Kevin recruit Alan, Cooper, Julie, and Ship, and even Morningstar to come help against the invasion. The gang fights its way through to the hyperspace jump gate, whilst turning hundreds of DN aliens back into humans. Sadly, before Ben can destroy it, the gate activates and the hybrid fleet arrives on the Earth. The trio enters the control tower where Gwen transforms into Anodyte and defeats the Hybrid, but she cannot stay in this form for long as it will destroy her body. A group of DN aliens surrounds the team, but the helpers, alongside Max, appear just in time and defeat them. Ben decides to visit the Hybrid Supremes himself to negotiate, and learns that their obsession with racial purity has led to inbreeding, loss of disease resistance, and sterility. As a result, they are the last generation of their species and want to take down the whole universe with them. Ben uses the Omnitrix to fuse the DNA of every Hybrid in the galaxy with random species from the Omnitrix database, repairing their genetic damage and hence giving them another chance at life. However, seeing themselves as impure, they want to end their own race. But uh, remember Reinrasig? Well, he walks in with a mutated arm and convinces them that this way of life is better than dying out. The Hybrid Council agrees and elects Reinrasig as the new Hybrid Supreme, who ends the invasion by recalling the Hybrid fleet from Earth. So, with the power of friendship, Ben saves the world once again. Totally unrelated, but Ben turns into Alien X for the first time on a mission. Alien X has no limitations to his powers, and hence he must become the voice of reason to confront two godly beings, Serena the voice of love and Bellicus the voice of rage, so he can use Alien X's powers. These two have been in an argument for millions of years and have never once agreed with each other, so you know, good luck Ben. He does fail to reason with them and decides to never use Alien X again. Somewhere along the line, Ben's parents learn about his powers, and he's forced to explain everything to them. Ben tries to sneak out to help Kevin on a mission, but then this happens. You are grounded. What? You can't ground me? I'm a superpowered alien! Ben refuses to listen to his parents since Kevin's life is at stake and arrives at the scene to rescue him. Eventually, his parents come around and even help Ben against the DN aliens using one of Max's guns. There's this one episode dedicated to Kevin where he returns to his mother's place only to find it destroyed. She tells him something about an alien called Ragnarok, and this is Max's reaction when Ben asks him about it. He's out looking for the guy. We're trying to help. Ah, then he must have found out. Found out what? It started years ago. Kevin's father, Devin, used to be Max's old pal who died in a plumber's mission while fighting Ragnarok. Devin heroically jumped in front of Ragnarok's attacks and saved Max's life, 
giving him enough time to grab the Null Void projector and send him there. Devin had stolen a key from Ragnarok, which is the first thing he seeks after escaping from the Null Void. Ben and Gwen want to help, but Kevin is so hell-bent on avenging his father all by himself. Even later, when they follow Ragnarok to his ship, Kevin tricks Ben and Gwen and sends them back to Earth with a space pod. Kevin destroys the control panel and overflows the ship, sending Ragnarok to die out in space all on his own. All right, and now for the Vilgax arc. Vilgax is back to conquering planets by defeating their strongest heroes and is now absorbing their powers. However, his ultimate goal is to get revenge on a 10-year-old boy who kicked his ass five years ago. Siphon, his right hand, arrives at the Earth and creates a dome, which is basically a fighting arena. To make the battle easier for Ben, Kevin tries to hack the Omnitrix to unlock its full potential, but the experiment goes south, causing a huge explosion. Some of Ben's aliens escape from the watch, and now he has to catch them like Pokemon, in a 24-hour rush, or they'll vanish forever. Oh, and Kevin has mutated into an amalgam of materials, and he can't transform back to normal. One by one, Ben catches all the aliens, and then arrives at the dome to fight his arch nemesis. He turns into Diamond Head, and kicks his ass. I mean, honestly, Vilgax had no chance to begin with. After failing to defeat Ben, Vilgax frees Ghost Freak in exchange for information about the Omnitrix. Tricks. However, his plan backfires, and now he wants help from Ben. You see, Ghost Freak attacked his planet and turned the people into his minions, and now he wants Ben to help save his race. They arrive at his planet and learn that Vilgax deeply cares about his people as he risks his life to save a little girl. Ben allows Ghost Freak to possess him on purpose and initially loses control of his body. However, Vilgax holds him off until Ben takes over again, and the planet is hence rescued. Rescued. Vilgax got information out of this whole mission and now seeks the Omnitrix for himself. Sometime later, the trio is teleported by the Omnitrix to a planet named Primus, where Ben loses his watch and follows it to a volcano of sorts. The group finds Vilgax at its core, fighting the new wielder of the Omnitrix, who happens to be Azmuth himself. Vilgax manages to steal the watch, but doesn't know how to use it. Azmuth reveals Primus contains the Codon Stream, a liquid database containing the DNA of all the Omnitrix's aliens, and without it, the watch is useless. When Vilgax arrived at Primus, it felt threatened and summoned the Omnitrix home alongside Azmuth to save its core. Later, Ben tricks Vilgax into turning into goo and then turns off its gravity projector to defeat him. He steals the watch back and throws Vilgax into the Codon stream, which turns him into a giant version of himself. Ben transforms into way big to match the size and kicks him back into space. However, he isn't the only one after the Omnitrix. Albedo, a young Galvin scientist and Azmuth's assistant, arrives at Earth and asks Ben to hand over the watch. You see, Albedo wants wanted to make one Omnitrix for himself, but Azmuth refused, saying that there could only be one of it. So he left the job and made a copy for himself. However, he forgot a tiny little detail. The watch has Ben's DNA by default, which caused him to permanently lose his Galvin form and turned him into an evil copy of Ben. Now he's back on Earth to obtain the real Omnitrix and change its DNA to get his original body back. The two Bens duke it out with each other, which further corrupts Albedo's appearance, but luckily for Ben, Azmuth arrives to save the day and sends Albedo to prison for putting the whole universe at stake. Now, you would think that that's the last of Albedo, but as it turns out, Vilgax helps Albedo out of prison because of a common enemy, Ben Tennyson. The first thing Albedo does is go back to the planet Galvin and steal an incomplete version of the Omnitrix called the Ultimatrix. He is still unable to return to his Galvin form because the alien list is locked by the original watch, so Albedo will have to reset the real Omnitrix. He decides to lure Ben in by abducting Kevin and Gwen, but fails to kidnap Grandpa Max, who warns Ben about Albedo. Max suggests that they wait and recruit the plumber's kids, but Ben immediately heads off to confront Albedo all on his own. Albedo shows the true powers of the Ultimatrix and kicks Ben's ass with the ultimate humongousaur. Vilgax gives him a choice, hand over the watch or lose your friends, and Ben is forced to give the Omnitrix away. Now, Ben may not have an Omnitrix anymore, 
but he does have his grandpa Max, who arrives just in time and takes the gang to safety. Oh, and uh, Vilgax now wants to keep the Omnitrix for himself, which turns Albedo against him. He uses its powers to turn all of his army humongousaur and attacks Albedo, who gets knocked out after getting overwhelmed. Ben returns to Vilgax and uses Omnitrix's voice command to initiate a self-destruct, and uh, what do you know? He actually blows it up. Since the watch is now destroyed, Kevin turns back to his human form again and regains his powers. Oh, and uh, on a side note, Gwen and Kevin share their first kiss, so, you know, they're officially a couple now. Ben initiates self-destruct on the Ultimatrix as well, and seeing how Ben has already destroyed the Omnitrix, Albedo hands over the watch to Ben. Ben, with his new watch, turns into Swampfire and fights Vilgax, but not before turning into the ultimate version of it. Vilgax tries to crash the ship into the Earth and destroy it using a fusion core, but Max and Gwen divert it from land. His ship hits the ocean, and Ben is forced to fight him underwater, where Vilgax showcases his true form. He attempts to eat Ultimate Swamp Fire, but Ben escapes by transforming into Jet Ray. Above water, Ben reunites with his teammates, and they watch the exploding remains of the ship. Vilgax has survived, so Ben vows to beat him if he ever shows up again, and hence, our hero saves the day once again. Alright guys, so that was the entire timeline of Ben 10 Alien Force. We may have made it to the end of the video, but let's go through the aliens that Ben turned into. We had Swamp Fire, Echo Echo, Humongosaur, Jet Ray, Big Chill, Chroma Stone, Brainstorm, Spider Monkey, Goop, Alien X, Nanomech, Lodestar, and Wrath. Thank you so much for watching our timeline of Ben 10 Alien Force. See you in the next video of Ben 10 Ultimate Alien.